Sometimes, chaos strikes. <laughs> My way to deal with chaos is to treat it as a puzzle, find some structure in it, and then find a way to put the pieces together. I just see puzzles everywhere around me. It's never been any other way, and so studying math was the natural thing to do. I never really questioned it. It all worked out perfectly. My preferred university, Bonn, the perfect fields of study, math and astronomy, and a fantastic scholarship. It felt like I had stepped out into the world and was set on my dream path. But my professional life on paper has a twist. A couple of years later, I switched from math and astronomy to doing a PhD in economics, and that without ever having taken an economics class before. What happened? I love the beauty, the clarity, and the purity of math. But for me, there was something missing. For me, when you add a drop of creativity to math, that's when the magic happens. That's when we get to play and have fun with math. Economics, and especially game theory, seemed like a field where I could find this this little extra that I was missing in math. So, I never quit math. I just use it in a different context now. Game theory allows me to turn questions into mathematical puzzles and solve them. I consider math fun, powerful, and beautiful. I know this is pretty much in contrast to the common perception about math. From my experience, when most people think or hear about math, what comes to their mind are words such as boring, complicated, subject I hated most at school, numbers, calculus, and so on. Asking students on campus pretty much confirmed this. <coughs> Rest in peace, GPA. <laughs> so, in my view, the impression that many have about math is incomplete, misleading, and oversimplified. Yes, I did say and mean oversimplified. I'm not trying to say that learning math cannot be frustrating. It takes time to figure it out. But learning to walk, playing an instrument, and training in sports this all takes time. It takes numerous attempts to figure it out, and then even more practice to build consistency and master a new skill. But we need to stay in it long enough to get to the good stuff. So, why don't we give the same patience and determination to math? It sometimes makes me sad that so many people don't push past those roadblocks and hence never get to see the fun parts of math. There's nothing like the excitement when you finally figure something out. Those moments are magical. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to use the next couple of minutes to hand waverly explain some higher math to you. It wouldn't be enough time. Instead, let me try to give you a glimpse into how I see and use math. So, had I said that I want to talk about the art of learning, would you be more curious, more intrigued, and more relaxed? Well, the Greek origin of the word math can be translated as fond of learning, knowledge, learning, studying. In, in German, it's sometimes translated as die Kunst des Lernens. The literal translation of this is the art of learning. I love this translation since it reflects so much of what math is for me. Now, even though math is so precise, there's no standard or commonly accepted definition of it. We know it's about studying structure, patterns, change, 
and so much more. Math, as well as music, uses abstract notation to represent abstract structures. There's another similarity. Structure is an important building block of math and music. Have you ever thought about the difference between music and the noise of a truck passing by? Essentially, it's just air hitting our eardrums a little bit differently. In the case of music, there's structure in it. Now, in math, it's important to know all relevant assumptions and definitions, to know the context. Let me give you a simple example. Take two numbers, say 11 and 3. What can we do with them? Well, we can simply add them. 11 plus 3 is 14. I guess you all agree with me on that. Well, yes, 14 is correct if we interpret it in our standard number system. But what if I had told you that this is about time? It's 11, and we add three hours of work. What time is it then? Well, here in the US, I guess most people would say two. In mathematical terms, this is modular arithmetic. In the case of the clock, arithmetic modulo, modulo 12. So you can think about this as every 12 hours, time wraps around once, and we start counting from zero. Does anyone know what this is? No? It's also a clock, a binary clock that uses the binary system to display time. Now, if you were to interpret what to us looks like 11 in the binary system, it represents the number 3 in our standard decimal system. Yet another interpretation, yet another connection. So this very simple example already shows us the richness of math and that context matters. In order to be able to interpret information correctly, we need to know the context. This applies to math as well as to life. Now, I said that I wanted to give you a glimpse into how I see and use math. Let me tell you a story. It shows how I see structures, find patterns, and use logic to solve problems. Well, sometimes I take this approach a little bit to the extreme. When I was 16, I had a lot of interests. Math, competitive badminton, music. In a sense, I fit in everywhere but nowhere. As a student, that as a teenager, <laughs> that made me feel lost. I wanted to belong to some group, to really fit in. Now, all the cool kids, they all drank beer. Don't worry, that's totally legal in Germany when you're 16. <laughs> the issue was, I really didn't like beer. Actually, I hated it. I thought it's disgusting. I did like wine, but wine wasn't cool. I knew from experience that it sometimes takes time and practice to learn or learn to like something new. So, super motivated, I made this training plan, plan to teach myself to like beer. <laughs> <laughs> it worked at fo as follows. Every time my mom, dad or friends would drink beer, I would ask if I can take a sip. So, every day I would take a sip and then at some point I would have a breakthrough and learn to like beer. Sounds like a solid plan, right? So, in theory, it should have worked. Well, in my case, it just resulted in a couple of pretty rough months until I eventually gave up. I realized that I was investing effort into something that just wasn't me, that wasn't even good for me, and I did all of this just to conform to fit in. So, today, I just admit, 
I'm German and I don't like beer. <laughs> but yeah, today I embrace this little flaw. So my beer experiment didn't work. Does it mean it was a bad plan? Here, my way of thinking kicks back in and I want to understand why. Now, one fun aspect about game theory is that it provides us with the tools to model and analyze strategic situations. The modeling techniques also apply to the single player case, such as my beer training story. So, a simple toy model of the beer training situation could look at follow as follows. Every time I take a sip, there's a certain probability alpha that I will have a success, meaning I learn to like beer. Otherwise, I can choose to quit or continue. Now, the whole situation basically results in a sequence of statistically independent Bernoulli trials, and we could calculate the probability that, say, after 100 sips, I still don't like beer. If you want details or have questions about this, come to my office hours. <laughs> now, if you were to interpret um, the results of a model like this, it could suggest two possible um, reasons why the beer experiment failed. One, I stopped too early, or two, I never really had a chance and the probability that I will ever learn to like beer is just zero. So maybe the problem was not the plan, but the goal. Maybe I just invested my energy in the wrong thing. I think that this is generally something that's very important. To be true to ourselves and to focus our energy accordingly. This is something that we easily forget. If we fall into this trap that we feel like we need to work more and do more to be more, we just end up mindlessly chasing goals and along the way may even forget if these are really our goals. So this summer, there was another twist in my life. I got catapulted out of my life as it was by a truck that hit me from behind while running. There was no way I could see it coming or avoid it. It's too early to say much about this because I'm still in recovery, but a couple of things became clear as a result of this. My many interests, those distractions, being fit on a very high cognitive and physical level when I got hit, this made a huge difference in the outcome. So, looking back, I did not train to be fit. I trained for life. The accident temporarily took away a lot of the skills and craft that I worked so long and hard to develop. Before, I was doing research every day. I got to go to the gym and train and play. This all changed when I woke up in the hospital with a traumatic brain injury and my shoulder being in pretty bad shape. Suddenly, I struggled to remember and repeat back five words. Normal conversations were challenging. I was dizzy all the time and my coordination was off. Walking backwards suddenly felt like trying to walk on my hands. Realizing this was frustrating and scary. It felt like in a split second, a lot of my skills had disappeared. What helps me is that I could fall back on one of the most important lessons my parents have taught us. We are worth more than our achievements. Our skills and craft they can be taken away from us. But I was lucky. What the accident did not take is my personality, my curiosity, my determination, and my willingness to work hard. 
I learned another important lesson the hard way. The future is not guaranteed. Not for anyone, not at any age. Had I known the accident would happen, I would have done a lot of things the same. I would have enjoyed learning, sports, music, life. And in all of that, I would have worked towards, a high, towards high standards. I would have focused more on enjoying every second of it, on enjoying the process, while working on building my goals, brick by brick. The puzzles we encounter in life are not rigid, but there are various ways to put the pieces together. There's no unique solution. Math teaches us that there are often many ways to solve a problem, to prove a theorem. The accident destroyed part of what I had built before, but the building blocks are still there. And while it's said that Recovery is about getting back to 100%. It's not about going back in life. It's about putting the pieces together in the best way I can imagine. We evolve and learn from our experiences. So what I am building up now may look quite similar or quite different to what I had built before. I think this is a perspective that can help us in general to face challenges, to deal with chaos in life, however big or small it may be, with perseverance, creativity and patience, we get to rebuild our life. We get to work on creating our own unique masterpiece.